guys, my name is Christina and welcome to my channel. And on this channel we'll talk a lot about how to create comics. I'm sharing everything I learned about doing this after creating my own comic for more than six years. But we'll also talk a lot about art, how to create better art, how to enjoy creating your art, and how to make art professionally and be a professional artist and get paid. Because this is also what I've been doing for my whole career. So if any of this is interesting to you, please consider supporting the channel. You know, there's a lot of stuff you can do down below. It really helps the channel grow and hopefully it will help you because you will have more of my videos to look at. And in today's video I wanted to share with you three very simple but yet very powerful tricks that can help you improve your digital art drawing quality immediately. And I know it does kind of sound like a get better quick scheme but actually there's those tips are really simple they still require you to practice but it's just actually they're very powerful and there is nothing I can say else just to actually tell you all those tricks. I mentioned some of them on this channel already on multiple occasions but today I decided to just put them together in one video so without further ado I just gonna dive into those tips and tricks all three of them. So first one is use references. I know I've been telling about this about using references about this channel for some time and I actually have a video about how to create reference board for your comic page or for your painting overall and I'm gonna link it up here. I'm showing how I'm creating this board and how I'm drawing using it. But basically using references is so important and gonna impact your quality so much. And some people, they look kind of down upon artists who we just use photo references, but they shouldn't. They shouldn't because artists in previous times, in the before digital times, they used to look at, you know, nature. They used to look at people who would come and model for them. They use all of those things to draw well. And of course, it's considered from prestigious if you're like an artist and you know how to draw things and you don't need to look at any of this. But yeah, certain things you do learn how to draw as, as much as you draw certain things, the better you become in drawing them. And for some, you don't really need it. However, for stuff like colors and for complexity of colors, references are really extremely amazing because photo captures so many colors and hues and you can literally use a photo as your color palette and use eyedropper tools, just grab colors from there and just use them in your painting. And you already have color palette with all the complex colors and you can pick and choose. And actually, photo, photo will have more colors than you will actually end up using in your painting, even if you're using this photo. It's just literally so many variations and you just have pick and choose whichever you wanna use. That's actually, to me, is very powerful tip and it will escalate your quality immediately, first of all, because you will have live reference in front of you. And second of all, every time you're looking at the reference, you're learning you're learning something it's because a lot of things about being an artist and being, being a good artist is not just teaching your hands how to do things it's about constantly learning how certain things look like and things look different in different lighting situation like for example if you draw an apple apple come in different shapes and colors and you have to learn how to draw all of the shapes and colors of apple and in different lighting environment they might be in a dim room outside in the garden actually hanging from the tree where the leaves kind of reflect some light on the them and cast some shadow on it so it's really so many things to draw and so many things in the world and all of them can look kind of different and have a different lighting scenario so it's very important to look at the references as much as possible I personally would not recommend just copying reference unless it's literally just a study uh, copying exactly first of all I think it's just boring for you to just draw exactly what is already there second if you're copying the photo exactly thing is the art doesn't really work like photo when we create art the way we simplify background the way we work with you know space and what is closer to us or the farther away from us works different than the photo does because photo literally just capturing the way things are and it's so exactly close to how our eye sees it that we understand what's happening but drawing is not gonna get there so we have to use certain simplification tools and certain adjustment to actually sell what we're drawing better for example things that are closer to the camera would be more contrasty because this is how I used to see it things that are farther are gonna be less contrasty that the dark is gonna be a little bit lifted and the light is gonna be a little bit dim so Stuff, stuff like atmosphere that we really reinforce when we are creating art. So I would not recommend copying exactly for this purpose just because photos are better at like helping you with something like actually better with depicting things in some ways but in other ways if you completely translate a photo to the painting it's gonna look a little odd. So I would not recommend copying exactly exactly unless you're like studying and also because I just think it's a little boring. I would suggest take a photo 
take colors from it, take understanding from this. For example, if you're looking at a specific thing about anatomy, just pick something and just draw this. But as you're drawing, change it slightly, draw it in a little bit different position. During the process, when you're taking something from the photo and putting on your drawing, have this like in between moment to take it in, digest, understand and use. Use it this way and then your it will really strengthen your drawing and every time you do it, you will learn something new and then next time you can draw it, no problem. So using references and using references smartly is amazing and it can improve the quality of your digital art literally overnight because this is what it did to me and now i'm not always using references at all sometimes i have a reference board but i'm not using it i'm using my own art to you know pick colors that like pages that i already drew just because it's just easy and i don't sometimes look at references at all for some things and for some i really use reference because i don't know how things looks like and all the details so references highly recommend. Second thing, and I also mentioned it, I think, in a couple videos, that's something you can do, but I'm gonna reinforce it and really, really talk about it in this one, and it is sketching with colors and creating base color for your drone with soft brush. And I'm gonna roll some clips of me actually doing this so you understand what's going on. But basically, using soft brush when you create line art or you have composition or something sketched out, before, don't just start painting on white canvas. First of all, use a color bucket tool. Don't start on a a wide canvas start with a canvas with base color already and then sketch out colors that you're going to be using with soft brush so let those colors because of the softness of the brush interact with each other and blend so it will help those colors naturally sit together because in real world colors always bounce off each other so the light when it hits the object it bounces a little bit all the time and every object in the environment especially you can see now with this like very colorful lighting that but the objects the colors kind of bleed a little bit and they they kind of reflect off each other a little bit but if you're doing in the drawings and you start with the soft brush and you create this soft blend and you will create some blending colors just for example you have blue as a base and you have red soft brush stroke and you have green soft brush stroke you already have some complex colors happening in between it will be blending very naturally because of the softness and because of the background color and it will create complex colors that sit really well because it's very easy when you're drawing something with colors to get it to look just disjointed and so the colors are not actually working together and the colors are all kind of stand out and fall apart using this method those colors are gonna actually be sitting very nicely and work together the whole image is gonna look very solid and very nice and no color will stand out so i would really really recommend that this color work in digital and i the moment i started doing this i really noticed like the quality of what i'm doing skyrocketed and like the feeling that all the objects that really belong to the painting that i'm drawing and it's really always leaves me satisfied with the way colors work so this is another trick that i really recommend and another one is a little bit more advanced nothing of what i just said actually beginner stuff it's more like intermediate but something that i'm gonna tell you now is actually more advanced it does require you to be a stronger artist using this will make you a stronger artist so uh, it's, uh, it's a good back and forth so and this is try to step away from lines and start drawing everything with color and with color strokes with brush strokes i know the more traditional workflow is to create like line art line outline and then fill it with colors kind of what i mentioned as i was talking about like base soft colors but try to step away from lines as much as you can and use lines that you used to sketch something out before painting as roughly as possible and not to rely on the line because line is something that is more graphic style right and colors especially if you're painting is a little bit different and there's no really space for a line in this type of drawing when you are, for example, shaping something or you're drawing a face and you're drawing a face in a more complex set of pose, I will also roll some clips here. If you're relying on the line, because line works kind of different than painting does, line kind of outlines object from the environment but when you're painting and to sell something you have to differentiate shapes within the objects uh, against the actual object itself so you have to reinforce this shape the shape like this side of the nose and it's like the shadows and tones so try to learn to paint with those shapes and with those tones and with like huge brush strokes and paint with tones shadows and lights and rely on this more than you rely on the line because it will be noticeable 
still that you're working off the line and if you're working and you're painting with shadows and light and tones and these huge brush strokes and you're painting with color already and letting the color itself lead you and that be the structure and building for example structural objects of the face or building mountains whatever you're drawing with color already and with like tones it will look way more structured and way more broken down and when i was studying uh, art like painting in russia in a very traditional way my teacher used to say i should be able to literally pick any fragment of your painting like literally just go and like square something out like this for example shape and i should be able to understand the shape of what you're doing without the context for example this is like i crop out my face to here i should paint it this way that people still understand that the shape goes like here that will happen if you paint if you think shape and paint shape with color tones and shadows rather than creating lines and then filling lines with different colors it will dramatically increase the quality of what you're creating and it will look more solid and more professional and more robust and it also will make you a stronger artist because lines sometimes do not translate in shape exactly well because if something looks good and proportions look good in lines it might look bad when you add colors and you have to like select, retransform, like shuffle stuff around, like redraw a little bit. And I'm talking from my own experience, I do this sometimes when I rely on lines too much. Then I notice when, when I'm painting it doesn't look as robust and also sometimes like proportions are just off because they read differently in lines. So yeah, I try to do it a lot, painting with color and especially like to do it on for example creatures that are more where anatomy is just not accurate human anatomy because to me it's just more more freedom it's just fun to create something like this i still rely on lines when i'm drawing characters and i need to calculate as i'm sketching out my comic like what clothes they're wearing if they're doing something how close i'm going to be working because there's a certain consistency thing that i need to put in lines but i still try to rely to them not as much because it's really it lives the quality if you're going from painting from stroke shadows and light and painting with color rather than relying on lines and shaping your characters and environments with lines. So that's basically it for this video and uh, just three tips and but there as you can see they require some practice and testing but I really recommend you try them out because they really can elevate your skill in digital drawing like like literally instantly like some of them like why I'm saying this like instantly it's not because I'm trying to sell you something it's just because when I implemented them I noticed the quality shift right away. They're really effective, so I hope they can be helpful for you. I hope you try them out. I hope they can be beneficial in your own digital art endeavors. Uh, so yeah, if you have tricks of your own, please make sure to share them in the comments down below. I really love reading that and I'm pretty sure it can help other people who stumble upon this video. And if this video was useful for you, I would appreciate it if you leave a like. As I said, it really helps my channel grow because it's still very tiny. We're still starting. And other than this, I hope you guys are having a good day and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching guys.